there's a very specific mechanism in France that allows the clinicians to deliver very rapidly um, a, a drug that is not yet approved. It's called ATU. And so we could deliver Nusinersen very early uh, in October 2016. And so we had many, many patients coming to my site, especially patients with old patients with type 1. Uh, when I say old, it means older than seven months. And then we, we saw patients quite old. We saw patients six years old. We even saw adults with type 1 coming. The drug was delivered within the EAP, so we had no concern about the cost. It was offered by the, by the company. And so we had a very large survey of treated patients with type 1, because EAP was for type 1. And we had a lot of old patients. So we had the idea to focus our analysis on patients who were not studied in the uh, in their study. Because in many countries, the payers may say, okay, the evidence has been reached for patients below the age of seven months. So what happens in these patients who are uh, above seven, uh, seven months and, and until when is it, um, does it worth to, 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 to treat? And so we uh, uh, analyzed our data at six months and the paper just went out in neurology yesterday. Um, and this is the next um, step, is the, um, the data at 14 months. And um, these patients, even the oldest one, continue to, to go better, to be, to be stronger, to gain points on the MFM scale. Um, it does not translate yet into an improvement, for instance, in um, weaning of ventilation or better deglutition, but on a motor point of view, um, we observe very consistently uh, through our cohort that these patients, even the oldest one, continue improving. And I think that it's quite important to come out with this data because in several countries, the payer says we need data before uh, reimbursing the medication um, for a specific uh, uh, group of patients. The rules are quite simple for SMA type 1. When diagnosis is done, these patients will only go down. So before um, all these therapies, nobody had never seen a type 1 patient improving. A pa type 1 patient is only going down. So when you see a type 1 patient doing something that he was not able to do before, this is very um, unusual and it cannot be achieved by a matter of chance. Then you can try to quantify the change a different way. You can use scales, um, but scales have limitation. Um, and if you speak about two points or three points on a scale, of course for us who are very involved in the field, we know what it means, but for patients, for parents, for payers, for other pediatricians, it is not that clear. You can also have patients reported outcome measures. Um, and you can use also innovative device to try to quantify. What I've learned is that um, the perspective of a type 1 patient, especially when they are older, for those who survive after the age of two years, um, was to look at the future down. They were waking up in the morning and the question is, uh, what am I going to lose? What's the next step down? This treated patient now uh, wake up in the morning and say, what's the next step up? And any things that they can do and that they were not able to do is something that brings incredible um, quality of life. And just the perspective of uh, this family to look at the future up rather than down makes a complete change in their quality of life.